Sony results out this Wednesday with better than expected profits. The company will present a new strategy later this month, but already now there are signs of the changes to come. They're going through a major strategy reorg as they try and focus on their core areas to stay relevant and pretty much get rid of the bloat that they've added on over the last decade. Unfortunately, what that means is they're having to focus on things that are really successful, like the Sony PlayStation console or the imaging sensors, which appear in a number of uh, smartphone devices, and jettison everything else. So, you know, they're making lots of redundancies in phone in their phone division after pretty poor performance there, and certainly with no real differentiators to appease the Chinese or, or anybody else around the world against anything else. They've also made the TV division a separate division. They've got rid of their laptops. They've dumped this week uh, their Sony online entertainment stuff, which used to be EverQuest. It's a really interesting strategy. It is working. There does seem to be some movement there. I don't think they're very much out of the woods yet. There's still a, lot, a long way to go. And I think certainly by the end of it, we'll have a very different Sony to the Sony that we've known for the last 10 years. According to media reports, Amazon is looking at buying some of Radio Shack's stores, and here's why. Amazon are now looking to wonder whether or not they need bricks and mortar sales, whether they need collection points or return points to be able to do that. This week they opened up a, a collection store, uh, which was staffed by real people, that's the key thing here, in a university in the States. And they're now looking to capitalize on Radio Shack's uh, bankruptcy and closure of uh, of some four and a half thousand stores and there's rumor that Sprint wants some of them a big uh, carrier in the US but that Amazon could use this to really catapult themselves into uh, a bricks and mortar scenario to be able to compete with the more traditional retailers like Macy's, Nordstrom uh, and others in the US. With tech companies shaking up one industry after another who's next? I think it's the turn of the banking industry. Big players like Google with their pay by Gmail uh, feature or Apple Pay when that starts rolling out around the globe uh, as well will we'll obviously have a huge disruption factor in the traditional visas and MasterCards of this world. But it's not just them. It's the PayPals, it's the iZettles, it's the Squares, it's even things like Snapchat which most of us will see as an instant messaging service for kids, now allowing you to easily transfer money between friends and family. And I think what it shows me, certainly, I and mean, this the whole democratization of tech scenario, is that places in the future won't be where we spend our money or save our money, won't be the traditional places we believe they are now, and that you and I could easily create a bank or a payment system and start offering that to our customers and once we get sort of a sense of a scale from people it becomes very easy to do and I think once you start looking at banking in that way it kind of turns everything that we know about it at the moment on its head and it's open to anybody to benefit from it.